Right, so I'm stuck at the uh, side of the motorway. Um, we ended up, uh, well, we ended up being shouted at by a security guard. And then I got uh, told off by a lady that came to help. Probably quite rightly, was annoyed. He's saying, so I came here for nothing. I went, yeah, but it's not my fault. I, I didn't call you. For any of that, roll intro. chickens. Right, it's a nice day today. Just brekkie. Right, come on. We haven't got much today, we're going to have to go and get you some. Right, so I'm just going to, just going to empty it. Oh. Enjoy. What about chicken food? It's a sentence a couple of years ago I never thought I'd, I'd ever say. Good morning. From the very northern tip of the southwest of France, Department 16, Charente. It's going to be a lovely day today. In terms of weather, I don't know whether it's going to be lovely in terms of uh, French bureaucracy. Bureaucracy. Easy for me to say. Yeah, so it's about half seven in the morning. Probably explains why my face is all puffy. Uh, I've just got out of bed. Yeah, we need to get uh, over to Angoulême. And, uh, oh, I've been distracted by the lunatic dog. Uh, need to get over to Angoulême. Need to go to the prefecture's office about getting Lisa's carte de séjour extended. Then we need to go to the CPAM office um, to sort out um, the carte vitale. Now, in anticipation for them saying, no idea what you're talking about, I've done another application. This is the third application that I've done. So it's on standby. We'll just hand it to her. Anyway, the kids are having the breakfast. I haven't had my morning coffee yet. I'm a little bit grumpy. So whatever's next, <laughs> let's do that. Um, daddy. It's a lovely day. Definitely need these. Cue slow-mo. Fatty. What are you doing? Just watch it because spent half a day waiting. So we got to the prefecture nice and early. It was already rammed. We got number 38. When we got there, I think they were still at uh, 15. But uh, yeah, we, we went and saw the woman. She had to, uh, Lisa's carte de séjour application. Said, yeah, 
you'll get an update in a few weeks. We asked for an extension, she went, you don't need it. She said, and it doesn't matter if the visa runs out. I think it's because she's already in the system, having applied. Then we went to the CPAR office for the Carvatel. And uh, we ended up, uh, well, we ended up being shouted at by a security guard um, who wanted to uh, search Lisa's bag, but pointed to like a machine. <laughs> anyway, um, he did what us English do when we're on holiday in Spain and the Spanish don't understand us. He just shouted, just shouted sack. <laughs> so we went, okay, it's the bag. And then we got in there, we had to wait about another hour. And uh, we found out that they've, that they've got Lisa's application. Uh, they were just missing a couple of bits of documents, a couple of documents um, to do with the validation of the visa. And so um, they've now uploaded that to Lisa's file and uh, she should hear, well, she should get a temporary number next week. So yeah, today was a massive pain in the ass, but it's done now. And uh, yeah, it's done. I'm gonna go on my bike. I'm gonna get myself one of those intercoms. Um, only because I know a couple of riders now that I can, that I can go out with. We talk to each other. And if not, uh, I, can, uh, I can listen to music or more importantly, listen to Google Maps tell me that I need to turn left or right. I'll see you tomorrow. Right, so I'm stuck at the uh, side of the motorway. Um, I've got a flat tyre. So, uh, Darren, Wardle, who, I, uh, who we met through YouTube, he's going to come out and give us a hand. How great's that? Right, I'm going to turn this off. Shut this off. I don't know what I've done wrong. I thought Karma had caught up with me. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, that was a close call. I've only been riding um, big bikes. You know, one of the backgrounds. It's not big um, for three years now, and so uh, I've I'd never had a blowout before. But uh, there it was. I'd uh, I bought the intercom system for the bike. I was riding back. I was probably doing about 80 mile an hour. Um, I was doing 81. And uh, the bike just didn't feel right. And I thought, I thought, yeah, something had gone wrong with my head because uh, space and time didn't seem to, uh, it didn't seem to work. I was thinking, oh, I, yeah, I don't know what's gone wrong. I think, yeah, I think I'm having a funny turn. So I, uh, I decided to pull over uh, at the safest place. Um, and the slower I got, the more unsteady the bike became. So much so that as I was coming to a, as I was coming to a stop, um, it was proper wobbling everywhere. It's because there was no air in the tire, massive hole in it, and uh, probably caused by a screw. And, uh, and as I came to a stop, nearly, nearly dropped the bike on the hard shoulder. There's like a weird adverse camber, you know, so when you put your peg down, the bike's still not leaning the right way, so I nearly dropped it. Managed to sort it out in the end. Huge thank you to my knight in shining armor, um, or a white t-shirt and shorts. Darren Wardle from Confalon, over that way. Um, bless him, he, he dropped everything and he came and uh, fixed it. He's an avid biker and has been a biker for years, you know, so he knew all the hacks. I put a screw in it, um, super glue in it, pumping it up um, and uh, took hours to get home because we kept having to stop and put more air in the tire and stuff like that. But Darren, You've been amazing. And he's coming around today actually to, uh, to, to, to get rid of some wood in the house that he's uh, bought that we can use for, for kindling. Yeah, so yesterday was just a day of being shouted at. Yes, yeah, so we got shouted at by the security guard. The dog's on there. Uh, he's on speed, isn't he? Um, got shouted at by the security guard. And then it got uh, told off by a lady that came to help. So I'm uh, I'm sat at the side of the road trying to sort out your stuff with Darren. Didn't notice that a, that a lady had uh, pulled over. Uh, she asked me whether I'd fallen, you know, so she was really concerned. Um, the word for fallen is tombe in French. I understood that, I went, no, no. 
She asked me whether I was injured. I think injured is rate, isn't it? Can't remember. Um, and I said no. And then her attitude changed. <laughs> because she asked me whether I'd uh, phone the police. I went, no. And she went, we have to, it's obligatory. I went, okay. I said, je n'ai plus de français dans ma tête. I said, I have no more French in my head. Uh, so she huffed and puffed a bit. Uh, and then she phoned the police on my behalf. Not realizing that in doing so, they'd sent a, a recovery truck, uh, which is an amazing service actually by the French. You know, you, you know, you break down on the side of the road, you phone the police, one seven, and, um, and they arranged for a recovery vehicle to come out. Um, so uh, another vehicle came out, put the cones out and stuff like that to make sure that I was safe. He waited until the recovery driver came, which I didn't realize was coming. Um, and, then, and then Darren comes along uh, a bit later on, uh, but I'd managed to tell the recovery driver that my friend was coming uh, and we were gonna repair at the side of the road. And he probably quite rightly was annoyed. He's saying, I had to Google translate it. He said, uh, so I came here for nothing. I went, yeah, but it's not my fault. I, I didn't call you. But apparently, and I may have got this wrong, um, you're allowed to fix or repair your vehicle, being followed by chickens, um, for 30 minutes at the roadside before you need to call the police. I think that's, I think that's how it works. Um, but yeah, um, stressful day yesterday. Really, really was. Was it all worth it for, a, uh, for an intercom? There we have it, back in the game. Um, well, it's a temporary fix anyway. I've done it before. Uh, and it does work, it's, it's enough to get me to uh, Ongolem on Tuesday. Because I've ordered a uh, new tyre. A um, 155 euros, then another 25 euros um, for fitting it. Unfortunately, it's a Dunlop. The tyre that, uh, that came with the bike, it's a Bridgestone, which is a good mate. Dunlop, in that name, um, motorbike riders you've used from his Dunlop ditch finders. <laughs> Don't know how true that is. But anyway, um, I've pumped the tire up now, uh, put 42 in the rear, and uh, I'll keep checking it, make sure it's not going down. Anyway, laters. <laughs>